Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. We're backstage at TechCrunch Disrupt 2012 San Francisco, and this is Jack Dorsey, the founder of Square and Twitter, just off stage. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you. Um, you talked a bit about founders and how people can be founders without necessarily actually founding the company. It's a spirit rather than you know, an, an action that they've actually done. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you think that having that spirit, is that something that can be learned? Um, or do you think it's innate? Uh, I, I definitely think it can be encouraged, um, and, and therefore I do think it can be learned. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely an attitude that people have to take on. They have to uh, believe in their passions. They have to believe in what they want to see in the world, and then, uh, and then work really hard and have drive to push it out there. Um, and, and, uh, and that's something that anyone can do. Um, it's just having clarity of purpose, clarity of vision, uh, and, and a desire to, uh, to see it in the world. And do people, do you think it's important to be here in Silicon Valley physically? You were just saying you're about to hop on a flight going to Detroit. Um, all these places are trying to create tech hubs. You're originally from the Midwest, right? Yeah, so, I'm from St. Louis. Yeah, so ha is, is it possible now to kind of have that, that place that fosters entrepreneurship elsewhere? I, I think it can happen anywhere. Um, and uh, San Francisco is nice, the Bay Area is nice because you have support. You have a network of mentors, um, and you have folks who are really uh, behind you, and they believe in you. Um, but uh, we can build that anywhere, um, and you, you see these ideas happening everywhere. Um, it's just a question of how quickly can we get them out there, and what the what the scale is. Um, and uh, and certainly, we need to work harder at doing that in more places in Silicon Valley. Yeah, um, I also want to ask about Square, mm -hmm. and you know, it's grown so much so quickly. Yeah. Um, how are you, what specifically are you doing to make sure that those good ideas, founder, founder ideas can come from anywhere, from someone who maybe you just hired this week? How are you making it so that those people have a voice and can potentially disrupt? Yeah, so 90% uh, of my time is time spent without, with, with people who do not report to me. So these are folks all over the company, and I make, sure, make it a point to sit down with everyone. Um, I meet all of our employees. Um, we, uh, we've arranged the office uh, in a very open way so that uh, there's all these stand-up desks, everyone can see each other, um, anyone can come up and talk and bring up an idea, but we encourage people nonstop um, to, uh, to question, to bring up their ideas and push forward and, and to show rather than tell. Um, so very well. Have something you're passionate about. Uh, people were cheering, clapping. They were. Last question. Um, I know that you, you're just so busy with Twitter and Square and Cyclass and all these things <laughs> that you do. Um, but looking out at the larger ecosystem, you mentioned how Twitter came from a company that was kind of a failed company, that, that mm -hmm. great ideas can come from failed companies. Is there another player out there that you see right now really being ripe for, for being a failed company, but having some kind of phoenix rising out of there? Um, I mean, you see that, you, you saw that with, with Bourbon and Instagram, of course, um, but uh, yeah, it happens. It happens all the time. I, I can't. I can't think of one immediately that uh, is just poking its head in that way. But um, a lot of people are talking about Yahoo now with Marissa Meyer yeah. at the helm. Yeah, like, I'm very excited about Marissa um, yeah. because she uh, she's an engineer. Um, she has deep context for Yahoo, both in terms of competitors and then partners. Um, and she is a very, very strong leader. Uh, and uh, and I've just been so impressed by her uh, and watching her from afar. So. Do you still get to code at all? You mentioned her being an engineer, and you are as well. I do. I do get to code. Not, yeah. They don't let me code on production because <laughs> we're moving massive amounts of communication money around. But um, I do. Uh, I do still get to code. So it's more of a hobby than than anything else. That's good. Keeping your fingers in it. Yeah. Um, Jack Dorsey, thank you for coming to disrupt and talking to us. Thank you.